What's going on YouTube? So one of the biggest questions that we get asked on our bus tour video is about our solar system and more specifically, how did we mount our panels? How many do we have? Why did we choose that particular system? So today I'm gonna to address all of those questions as well as talking about the maintenance of a solar system and how you can keep it producing power at its optimum performance. So let's check it out. Hey. As you can see from the intro, we have four solar panels mounted flat on the roof of our bus. Each one is 265 watts, making a total of 1,060 watts worth of solar panels. Now, you're never actually going to see that full production mounting the panels flat on the roof like this. The only way that you would actually achieve that full production is if they were angled at the sun and ended up moving with the sun throughout the day to maintain that production. So sometimes we'll see 100 watts, sometimes we'll see 200 watts, sometimes we'll see 500 watts, sometimes we'll see 800 watts. It really depends upon how we're parked, where the sun's located, how much sun is going to go through the entirety of the day. So there's a lot of variables with that production, which is one of the main reasons on why we built as big of a system as we did, because we're originally from Washington state, it's cloudy three quarters of the year. And so we wanted to make sure that even in those cloudy months, we would still be able to produce a fair amount of power. And even on very, very cloudy days, we still can typically see anywhere from two to 300 watts worth of production, which is enough to keep our batteries topped off, run our electric refrigerator, charge devices, allow us to use the TV, lights, blender, all of the various electrical devices. The only thing that our system will not run is our little electric space heater, but we get around that by using a little portable generator anytime we actually need to use that. We can also use that portable generator to top off the system with the inverter charger that we have. I actually created another video talking about our inverter charger, charge controller, and all of those other components, which I'll link at the end of this video so that you can check that out as well. One of the keys to making sure that your panels are always running at their top production is to make sure and keep them clean. And we do that by using a homemade one-to-one -one vinegar spray mixed with water. So one part water, one part vinegar. And then what I do is I come up here, depending upon the time of year and how dirty they are once a week or once a month to make sure and keep them clean. And you can do that by cleaning one quadrant at a time on the panels, especially if you're gonna be doing it in the sun, the spray is gonna evaporate really, really quickly. So you wanna make sure and do a small section, get that clean, then move to the next section and get that clean. So I'm gonna show you how I do that real quick. So I just spray one section down, use my terry cloth, microfiber cloth, or whatever soft cloth you wanna use and you clean all of that dirt and debris. And then once that section done, you'll move to the next section. Now, depending upon how long you've waited to clean your panels, you may need to actually end up cleaning the panel twice I've kind of waited a little longer because we haven't been in any real bad weather recently, but a lot of pollen and dirt has built up on these panels. So I'm actually gonna need to go back through once I finish cleaning this panel and do it a second time to make sure and remove any of the haze. So then we can make sure the panel is running in its optimum performance. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset up the camera and then I'm just gonna go through and quickly clean all of the panels so you can kind of see that process. So 
So now one thing that I'm noticing is I've got a couple of spots of pitch located on here. So I'm gonna have to come back with some rubbing alcohol in order to get that off. Another thing that you can use if you don't wanna use rubbing alcohol or don't have any is olive oil on a little bit of paper towel and that'll take this right off. So we'll probably end up doing that. So now as you can see by this cloth, this panel was really, really dirty and that is going to reduce the amount of production. Not greatly, not nearly as much as if you had a bunch of leaves built up on the panel or if it's actually in fact shaded, but it still is going to reduce the amount of production that you're gonna see. I'm just gonna go back through and clean it a second time to make sure and remove that haze. All right, and just like that, perfectly clean panel. Now to do the other three. So just like that, super dirty cloth, four bright clean panels. That way we're gonna optimize our production and make sure that we're getting the most out of this system. So now let's talk about how we wired these panels together. All right, so this is the main junction point for all of our solar panels where the connections run back to our charge controller. And I have the front two panels wired together to make a single bank and the back two panels wired together to make another bank. And then they join together with two MC4 connectors in this location. The reason I did that instead of wiring them all together to make a single bank was not only to stay within the constraints of our charge controller, but it also makes sure that if one group is shaded, it doesn't affect the production of the other group. And that way we can maintain optimum performance of the system. Now, we also, again, just like when we mounted the solar panels covering everything with silicone, we did the same thing here to make sure that we don't have any water leaks. This particular connector I got off of Amazon as well as the MC4 connectors and all of the wiring, which I'll link in the description box below, along with all of the tools that you'll need in order to make these connectors yourself. So that's all you need to do to make sure and keep your panels running at their optimum performance. There's one other thing that you'll want to double check every time you come up to clean the panels, and that's the mounting hardware and make sure nothing's come loose while going down the road. If you liked this video and found it informative, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments section below and I'll make sure to answer those. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any notifications when we make another video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. We've had a lot of questions about our biggest questions that we get on our bus tour video. Let's start over. Sorry, that looked at the top. I almost had it. I almost had it. Damn it. Almost.